YouTube, Justin Fuller here, and today I am standing right in front of a 2022 Honda Insight Touring. So this is gonna give you all the bells, all the whistles, and of course we gotta talk about what it has, what it doesn't have, and how it stacks up against the competition. <laughs> So I don't know about you, but when I think about a hybrid, I think about raw, unadulterated power and performance. Ah, maybe not, but it's more about efficiency. So let's come on in and talk about that. So what you're looking at is a 1.5 liter engine under here. This is putting out 151 horsepower, right? So not gonna be the most power coming out of a vehicle. To give you an idea, if you're looking at a Honda Civic, the two liter engine, you'd be looking at about 158. If you were jumping up to that 1.5 liter turbo that they offer, you'd be around 180 horsepower. So just to give you an idea in comparison, since this does live on the same platform, as the Honda Civic. So a lot of the things that we're gonna talk about as far as spacing, uh, as far as front and back and leg room is gonna be very similar. But while we're up here, let's just point out a couple things as far as reservoirs and places where you can access different things. Uh, of course, I've got a fuse box sitting over here, CPU sitting in the back as far as accessing my battery cables as well. As you come across, you got the engine, the generator, my air box, and then a couple other fluids as far as reservoirs. So it is tight in here. If you're looking to add in auxiliary lines and wires, it is gonna be a little bit harder to get back in there if that's something you wanna do. All right, guys, so while we're up here at the engine, we should probably talk about a horse cap power comparison as far as how this car stacks up against other vehicles out there in the market. So I want to throw that up on the screen so that you can get an understanding. Obviously, this car gets 151 horsepower, as I mentioned earlier, but I want you to see how it stacks up to other vehicles that are out there in the market. Now, some other cars you might compare this to would be the Civic, as I mentioned earlier, if you're looking at a non-hybrid version, or you might go the other way and go to maybe an Accord hybrid, right? Since we are in a touring model and the price points can be a little bit higher, it gives you a little bit more flexibility as far as where you could jump around to. So check out what I got up on the screen there, and then we'll talk about miles per gallon. All right, guys, so here we are at the front of this vehicle, and I want to talk to you about miles per gallon. So in the touring model, which I'm sitting in front of, you're going to get 51 in the city and 48 on the highway. Now, if you were dropping down trims to that EX, you would actually be getting better gas mileage. The model below this gets 55 in the city and 49 on the highway. So just something to keep in mind if you're looking at the EX or the, the touring trim levels. Now, I want to throw a comparison up on the screen so you can see how this car stacks up to other vehicles, uh, makes and models out there in the market. Now, while it's doing that, I want to talk to you about two other cars. Maybe if you're looking at this, since it is so closely related to Honda Civic, you're thinking, hey, eh, maybe I can save a couple bucks, get, you know, a non-hybrid vehicle. So the base model Civic, you're going to be looking at roughly 33 in the city and 42 on the highway. So you are going to give up a considerable amount of gas mileage. Or if you want to stay in that hybrid family, you could go over to the Accord hybrid, which then you're looking at roughly, I want to say 48 in the city and 40 on the highway. So with this vehicle, you are still coming out ahead. It really just depends on spacing. If you want to drop down uh, and, you know, get a, a, a lesser version of an Accord hybrid, but gain that space inside, you might be giving up amenities. Uh, or do I look at something completely different than, uh, than obviously a Honda, right? So hopefully that gives you kind of a breakdown, a good understanding of the Honda family. And then of course, other makes and models out there. All right, guys, so before we do a walk around on this vehicle, I want to talk to you about the differences between the EX trim and, of course, the Touring, which I'm sitting in. So in the Touring model, you're going to be looking at things like a, you know, a, a, a 10 speaker system with 450 watts. You're going to have this leather interior. You're going to have the moonroof above me, and you're going to have 17 inch versus the 16 inch alloy wheels that you would have on the EX. Now, I'm sure there's a couple extra features that I'm forgetting, so I'm going to throw those up on the screen so that you can really get a strong understanding for, hey, what am, all, am I getting in the Touring model that I wouldn't be getting in that EX? But I also want you to understand, hey, how much extra is it costing me? So if you decided, do I want to drop down to the EX? How much money am I going to save or how much extra am I spending? Depending on how you want to view it being in the touring model. So take a look at that. Understand what it is that you're gaining by being in the touring model. And that way you'll know if the EX or the touring is better for you. All right, guys. So I want to start you on the walk around and just kind of point out a few features on the front end of the car. First off being that you have a full LED setup here, including your headlights, your daytime running lights, and then down below your fog lights. Now coming across, you have this chrome brow with the black underneath and of course the Honda emblem right there. And then I'll point it out down here in this corner. You're going to have your radar that's going to work in conjunction with the camera up here for some of your Honda sensing stuff. Now let's talk about Honda sensing and what that is. So the first being a collision mitigation braking system. So if it's looking like I'm rearing another car, it'll give me an audible alert and they can actually apply the brakes to help prevent the accident. So that's collision mitigation braking. Now, if you're starting to drift off the shoulder of the road, you have road departure mitigation. It'll give you an audible alert and then start to vibrate the wheel to say, hey, wake up, pay attention. Uh, you know, obviously you may be falling asleep. 
Now, the last one is gonna be related to uh, this camera up here. And that's gonna be for your lane keep assist. So as I'm driving down the road, it's gonna detect the lines on the road. So if I drift to the left or right, it can actually keep me centered in those lanes. So a lot of different features that you have here to take advantage of. Now, on top of that, you're gonna have things like airbags in the vehicle, two front, two side, two full curtain with rollover sensors and different things. Of course, turn indicators in your mirrors. They are breakaway mirrors, of course. And then I will point out if you can see the icon right there, this does have blind spot monitoring in it, meaning that it will alert you if someone's in your blind spot that will light up. And then if you start to get over, it'll give you an audible alert. Now the car does have smart key entry, meaning I can walk up, put my hand on the door handle, it'll unlock for me or press the three ridges right here and it will lock the doors for me. Now you're looking at a 17 inch alloy wheel on this vehicle right here. So one inch larger than what you'd be if you were in the EX trim. Now, as you come up top, I will point out that this car does have a moonroof in it. If you drop down to the EX, this is one of the items that you would be giving up. Now, back on the back, you, of course, have the shark fin here. So this is going to be as far as reaching XM, FM, AM, all of those things. And as we wrap around to the back of the car, you have the LED setup again, of course, hybrid and touring badging right here as we come across your Honda emblem. And then, of course, it is badged inside as well. And then you've got that nice chrome brow on the bottom of the vehicle. All right, guys. So here I am at the trunk of this vehicle. And this is usually the part where you make some cheesy joke about how many bodies. Nobody cares about that. Let's be honest. Let's talk about trunk space. What can I fit in here if I'm going to the airport? How many strollers can I fit in here if I need to go to the fair? Let's talk about things that matter. So come on in and let's look this out. So the first thing I want to point out is I've got my carpeted floor mats in here. They do come standard with the car. So let me get those out of the way. Now I've got one of these flipped down. So I just want to point out that it is a 60-40 split, meaning I can unlock this other one and then push it down and give my spouse all this available space to use if I need to. Now, with that said, the one thing I don't like about the trunk is gonna be right under here. They don't give you a spare tire. They give you this inflator kit and then they give you basically what's called fix a flat, right? So same idea. So I would love to see that land in this car, be able to take that out and put a small spare in here. But be aware, if you are looking at any of Honda's hybrids, they do not come with a spare. While we're back here, I wanna to talk to you about a trunk space comparison. So I wanna throw that up on the screen so that you can understand how this car stacks up against other makes and models out there in the market. While that's up there, I wanna remind you that if you're thinking, hey, maybe I'll go with the Civic, this car has 15.1 cubic feet of space in the trunk area. If you're looking at something like a Civic, I believe you're at about 14.8. So the alternate to that would be to go over to the Honda Accord Hybrid, and then you could get some additional trunk space if you wanna stay in the Honda family. Uh, if not, you can always look at the other, uh, you know, comparisons that are up on the screen. So let's talk about the second row now. All right, guys, so here we are on the second row of this Honda Inside Touring, right? So I first wanna point out that, of course, it does have leather interior. So just something to be aware of if you are jumping that touring model, that is something that's gonna be available to you. Now, while I'm back here, I wanna kind of spin this around just so you can see what kind of leg room I've got. So I had myself sitting up there. So I've got plenty of room back here as a six footer. I'm a 250 guy, so I'm not a little dude. And I had this set up to where I was driving in front of me, right? So know that you've got a good amount of space to work with here as far as a driver and somebody riding behind that driver. Now, with that said, I want to let you know that you have 37 point four, um, you know, inches of space back here as far as your second row leg room. So I want to throw a comparison up on the screen so that you can understand how this car stacks up to other vehicles out there in the market. Now, while that's up on the screen, I'll remind you again, if you're comparing this to a Honda Civic, it's actually the exact same. Uh, so when we're talking about an interior dimensions as far as leg room in the front and the second row, it's going to be the exact same on those two vehicles. If you're looking for that additional leg space in the Honda family and you want it to be hybrid, I would recommend going to the a Honda Accord hybrid. So now that you've seen that, let's talk about some materials. So as we come across here, I just want to point out that you have a nice perforation here on the leather. Uh, so you can see it here. And then I've got a solid fill here. And of course, I've got to flip down as far as, you know, throw cups, drinks and elbows on. And then coming across, I've got some additional storage down here uh, and then a nice leather seat here to where my elbows are going to go. So anywhere elbows typically land, you're going to find darker colors, whether the interior is actually black or, you know, maybe tan or gray. Right. So you got a nice finish here. I've got my cubby holes on the back here. And once again, Honda, you've done it to us. You couldn't give us the second one. I don't understand why. I don't know why Honda won't do it. Someday, I dream big. Two pockets, the back of every Honda. What's up, guys? So here we are in the front row of this vehicle. So up front, you've got 42.3 inches of legroom, so plenty of legroom. I, I can't even make my knees touch, and I don't even have it all the way back. So know that you've got quite a bit of space. Now, when you're comparing to this to other makes out and, and models out there on the market, I'll throw that up on the screen, but they're all going to live, I mean, within quarters of an inch of each other. So a lot of the same when it comes to that. Uh, same thing if you're looking at the Civic, the exact same layout there too, right? So you can look at that Accord Hybrid if you're trying to get a little bit more spacing out of it. Uh, so just something to be aware of as well, right? 
Now, as far as materials up there, same thing. You've got the leather here, the leather down the center, and then the leather on your steering wheel, which is right in front of me, of course. Uh, so it is a nice feel, but it does come at that price tag, right? So I want to throw that back up on the screen just so you can have a quick reminder of, hey, I want the leather interior. I think I want the moonroof. You know, I want the additional speakers. I want the extra power wattage. I want the one inch larger wheels. What is it going to cost me? You know, if I'm going from that EX up to that Touring, what's it going to cost me? So I'm going to throw that list of items up on the screen with the additional cost difference, just so you can understand. I always like to make sure that everybody understands what the differences between the trims are, because in my experience, that's the hardest thing to figure out. You may know that you want a Honda, but you don't know exactly which version you want. So take a look at that, and then we'll talk about the dash layout. All right, guys, so as we come across the dash, we've got quite a bit of buttons and knobs and features to talk about. So I just want to briefly hit on them and kind of go from there. So on your door, it's your typical features, window controls, window locks, door locks, and then your mirror controls. They are powered. As you come up, I'll point out a couple different features here. One, if you need to pop the gas door, it's easy enough to get to right there. My vehicle stability assist, this works with traction control. So in the event that you go into skid, it'll transfer power to whichever wheel is getting better traction. If I press this button right here, this is gonna be related to some of your Honda sensing features. So when I press that, you're gonna see this screen come on up here. And the first one you're gonna see is road departure mitigation. So I mentioned that earlier. This is where if I start to drive off the shoulder of the road, to give me an audible alert and actually start to shake the wheel. If I go down to the next one, this is where my blind spot uh, monitoring system is. So I will roll down the window and show you once again, you do have those icons right there in the mirror that will light up in orange. And if I start to try to get over and there's somebody there, it will actually go ahead and give me an audible alert. And then one more down, I've got my collision mitigation braking system. So we talked about that. That's where if it's looking like I'm gonna rear in another car, it will be an audible alert, flash in the dash, and then actually start to apply the brakes to help prevent that accident from happening. So these are just a few of the Honda sensing features that you have, right? Connected to that button right there. Now accessing your trip button, and then of course dimming the screen up here. So if you wanted to mess with that, you absolutely could, and you could see me playing with it right there. Now let's talk about the steering wheel here. So when I'm looking at my steering wheel, it's not super overload as far as buttons and knobs, but I think the least amount you can get is usually the better, just because it's less to have to mess with and try to look down it and away from the road. But let's talk about this. All of them are up top and nice and easy, so you're not reaching around underneath and over and all that. So over here on the right side, the first thing is gonna be this home button. This will talk you through quite a few different menus over here. So I'm not gonna walk you through all of these. I'll just briefly touch on them and kind of explain what they are. So gauges only makes sense. Eco drive, just as far as it'll let me know the way I'm driving, whether it's gonna be performance-based, helping me as far as MPGs or hurting me. Uh, as I come down powerful, Flow, just letting you know which way you're driving. So, you know, whether I'm driving a hybrid mode, which you're seeing, or all electric uh, or purely gasoline. So it's just going to let you know which way you're driving. Range and fuel, you understand what that is. Fuel economy, just showing you current previous trips. Uh, as we keep coming down speed and time, right? So a lot is connected to this car as far as the performance goes in MPG uh, format. Now, coming down audio-wise, if I have something turned on, which let me turn on this, uh, you'll see that it'll show you what you're listening to. So it is a nice display. I like that it actually shows me the station, what I'm listening to. So it does have RDS, so it'll tell you the name of the station, name of the song, that sort of thing. Uh, as you continue down phone, if you connect up your phone, obviously you better have some, some access here. Uh, of course, you'll have Bluetooth controls while I'm talking about the phone, so to answer a call, hang up, and use voice command to say, call someone, text someone, that sort of thing. If you press and hold, you can use Siri for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, okay, Google if you want, to access and ask them to do things. So so, you know, send a text, navigate here, call this place, you know, you know, any of those normal things that you might use it for. Now, coming back up to here, let's talk about this. So this car does have built-in navigation. Uh, so I can, of course, go to my home screen. I can go to recent destinations, some of these easy things to make life a little bit easier on me as I'm on the go. Now, your navigation system, let me pull it up over here, is set up through Garmin, right? So know that you have a built-in navigation that comes in the touring model. If you drop down that EX, you do not. However, I will mention that you have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So if you're plugging into the USB, which is right down here, I could access any of those features through my phone. So if I prefer Google Maps, I prefer Waze, Apple Maps, maybe I prefer the TomTom app. I don't know. There's a lot of different options available to you out there that are that are free, right? So take advantage of. So just know that this car does have built-in navigation if that's something you really want it to have. Now, coming back to this screen, volume controls are right here. Jumping back out of buttons right there. My toggle, what I'm using, that's what I'm going through right here. So just want to make sure we understand that. Now, below this traffic signs. This one's really cool. It actually uses that same camera up here that I was mentioning earlier to detect the lines on the road for lane keep assist. That camera can pick up traffic signs that you pass them. What's cool about this is that, yeah, a lot of navigation systems will show you that, but what if you're in a work zone, right? Uh, you know, construction zone that it doesn't know exists. Well, this is going to pick up those traffic signs and throw them right there on the screen for you. So a very helpful feature. I really, really like that feature a lot. Now, under below that, driver support. So this is just hopping back to some of those Honda sensing features and then an attention monitor system so if you're using all these different features, you may not be touching the gas and brakes, you know, the wheel may be controlling itself a little bit. So it's just going to make sure that you're still actively 
there and, and paying attention to the road. Uh, and then below that, maintenance. This is going to be like oil, that sort of thing, right? And then safety support jumps back over so that access is that same button that we have here, just a different way to get there. Now, on the other side of the steering wheel is going to be two different features. Now, you're going to press the main button, and this is going to bring on ACC and LKAS. So I'm going to talk about lane keep assist first. So that's this button right here. When I press this button, you're going to see some dotted lines filled in there. Now, when I'm driving down the road, it's going to use that same camera that we talked about to detect those lines on the road. And this way, once it picks them up, I'm going over 45, those will fill in solid. When they do, now if I start to drift a little bit to the left or the right, the wheel will actually correct for me and keep me center of that lane. So if I get distracted, I won't accidentally come over a lane and bump into somebody, right? So this is there to protect you and those around you. Now, the other feature on here is gonna be related to your cruise control. It's called adaptive cruise control. So once I get up to the speed I would want, I would press the set button. From there, it would hold my speed and show it to me right there. Now, after that, I could press this button to select boxes, you'll see here. Now, the more boxes, the more space it's gonna keep between you and the car in front of you. And what I mean by that is, when I'm driving down the road, it's gonna use that radar down in the grill that I pointed out on the walk around to bounce it off cars in front of you. So if I'm going 65 and the guy in front of me is going 55, it'll keep designated spacing in my cruise control. When I get out from Orinum, it'll take me back up to my designated speed that I've selected, and that way I can get down to the road. And if I come to another car in front of me, same thing, it'll slow down, keep that designated spacing until I get around them and continue. So I don't have to turn this on off or you know, slow down, speed up. You still can, you've got the minus and the plus button. So if you wanna do that, or if you just wanna go to classic cruise control, you can press and hold this button and it'll flip over, right? So now it's just cruise mode, press and hold again, ACC mode, right? So know that you have the option of either one. Now on the backside, you've got the plus and minus symbols here, and this is gonna allow you to upshift and downshift the car. Now, what's big about that in this car is it gives you the ability to, to downshift the car and build up a charge. So you'll see your charge meter over here. So what's cool about that is that I could be driving and instead of braking the car, which it will use regenerative braking, I could downshift a bunch, and that way it'll slow the car down on its own, and in doing so, it's gonna you know take some of that heat off the brake pads and create energy to use for the car through electricity. So it's a really cool, idea to build with that charge. Now, what do you do with that charge? That allows you to drive in EV mode, and that would be purely electric. Now, this is going to be for when you're going, you know, 25 miles an hour. So if you're in stop and go traffic, that's where you're really going to pick up and make better gas much. So this car gets 51 in the city without this button, but using it, I can push past those numbers. So this allows me to turn on purely electric. Now, if you try to turn this on on the highway, it's just going to flip back over to gasoline mode. So just be aware of that. This is only going to work at lower speeds. So that is EV mode and how it works. And these are the paddles that allow you to affect that mode. Now over here, you've got your auto and off headlights and then my fog light controls. So easy to access there. And on the other side, I have my windshield wipers. So that's kind of run down to the steering wheel and the buttons on that side. Let's talk about the touchscreen. All right, guys, so here we are on the touchscreen. So I just want to walk you through a couple different features so that you understand how the vehicle works and how you can take advantage of all these different features on here. The first thing I want to point out is that you can move all of these buttons around and customize even up top. All you got to do is press and hold, and then it'll bring up this easy menu to where you can start moving things around, right? So if you want to misplace or place things in different spots, you know, you want to move something around and put something else in its spot, know that you can absolutely do that. When you're done, press the done button, and it'll pull it back to whatever you set it to. Now, while we have the screen pulled up, I'll just kind of walk you through briefly what these different things are. Navigation, we mentioned earlier, you do have Garmin set up, uh, so I have access to this if I'm parked. Uh, of course, I can search it out. If I'm driving, it's going to ask me to use the voice command system, uh, but a lot of different things that you can set up here as far as setting up your home, recent searches, previous places, things along the way. I think all of us have a general understanding for how it works. It is Garmin, so they're pretty well known for it. Now, FM and AM, I'm just going to briefly touch on both of these at the same time, right? I've got my stations. I can seek through right here. If I want, I can tune, I can scan, do all those normal things uh, that I might want to do, right? So easy enough to use, and then you do have HD radio stations as well, so know that you can take advantage of that. Now, coming out of that, as far as the power flow, I really do like this. It's just kind of cool to be able to see the way that I'm driving. Uh, so once again, it'll show you those connections to if you're driving in a hybrid mode, purely electric or purely gasoline mode. And of course, show me what range is in my current drive. Uh, so kind of a cool uh, system and layout here. I just like the graphic of it. I don't know. Uh, now, as far as connecting up to your phone, easy enough to do to connect to a phone. Why don't we actually go ahead and do this just so you can see how fast or how slow this takes. So connect to device. I'm going to open up my phone. From here, I need to make sure I have my Bluetooth turned on. So I'm going to turn my Bluetooth on and then I'm going to make sure it's set to discoverable. So let's come on in here, set it, pair a new device. All right, let's hit OK and allow the two to search for each other. Now, once it's found it, all I got to do is select my device. Uh, let's make sure I actually selected it. Uh, and then it should connect up on here. It'll say hands-free link, hit pair, boom. We've connected up a phone to the car. I want to allow it to access audio and of course my phone. So save that. Now the phone has been connected. So easy enough to connect up a phone to the car. Now, while it's connecting up, I will remind you that usually when a phone pairs up, it's going to prompt you for one of these features that I really do like. Uh, and that's going to be related to Honda sensing, uh, or excuse me, I should say Honda link. Now coming back out of that, Let's scroll over to that so we can talk about it for a second. So related to Honda Link, 
Honda link is right here. It's usually gonna prompt you when you connect up the phone saying, hey, in the event that you get in an accident, would you, in the airbags deploy, would you like Honda to be able to, to provide your location to EMS services? So I would always enable this, this is 100% free. And what this is gonna do is just help protect you because they can provide your year, make, model, color, and last known location of your vehicle uh, to help you know make sure that you're getting taken care of if you do drive off the side of the road and maybe no one could see you, right? So Honda Link, there are plenty of other subscription-based features you can take advantage of, like being able to start your uh, car from your phone or be able to control the door locks. And some of these are gonna be a uh, trial and then it would be a, a subscription, as I mentioned, after that. So just be aware of that. So that's Honda Link, right? So trip computer, easy enough to understand current and previous trips, this range on this tank of gas. As we move across, I'm gonna jump over here. You've got your SMS text function, so to read text aloud to you. Sirius uh, XM satellite radio, 90 days comes for free, so you have all this. It is a color display, so it's nice that it shows you names and all that stuff. Uh, and then coming back, uh, you've got your USB, so USB 1 and 2, which are down here. Uh, you can connect up, obviously, your phone if you want to use Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, um, or you could always go the route of plugging in uh, a thumb drive to be able to store music, not only to the car, uh, but to be able to leave that in here and listen to music off of it. Now, AM, we just kind of touched on the FM, so I'm not going to mess with that. System updates, you just need to connect to Wi-Fi to allow the car to update the system. AT&T hotspot, uh, so on here, you can connect up and allow all your passengers inside of your car. Part of what this would be cool is, is if you were using the cabin control app, it allows you all to use the um, the function of being able to add into a social playlist and some different things that I'll show you here in a moment. Uh, but once this is loaded up, I would just turn it on. Now, as far as the, depending on if you're an AT&T customer or you're not, there's some different pricing related to that. Uh, so I'll, I'll try to throw that up on the screen so that you can get an understanding for, hey, what's gonna cost me if I wanna keep this hotspot running, right? So as we continue across, we jump over to Honda Link. So that is all of those. I wanna come back though real quick and just talk about the smartphone connection. So whether you're using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, let's talk about how that works. All right guys, so I've plugged my phone into the USB and now you'll notice that Android Auto has popped up because that's what I'm using. If not, it would be Apple CarPlay depending on what style of phone you're using. Now from here, I wanna show you this menu and kind of the different things you have available to you. So I mentioned mapping systems earlier. I typically use Google Maps, so I have that moved up here to the top. So you can you can customize all these and move them around as well. But if you preferred Apple Maps or Waze or maybe TomTom Tom or whatever it may be, you know that you can have that. And then of course I use Spotify regularly, so I like to keep that up top too. Now there are plenty of different apps that you can take advantage of, things like accessing podcasts, your messengers, uh, voice. You know, I use Google Voice. I use a lot of the Google products, uh, Waze, the weather, you know, all kinds of different things that you can take advantage of. So feel free to look up those apps. They're forever changing and updating. Uh, so there's always a good list of new apps that you can take advantage of. You can, of course, customize in here too. So if you wanted to change this background, know that you absolutely could. When you jump into your settings, it's going to give you some different options of stuff that you can play with. So know that you can do a little bit of customization inside of this screen as well. So choosing wallpaper, that's what I was just mentioning. Maybe I want to jump over to the amped one. Cool. I'm good with that. Let's rock with that, right? So that's how you would do it. So just so you have a strong understanding of this. So related to that, I just want to let you know this is 100% free. If you wanted to drop down to that EX, know that you could still have a mapping system built in essentially to your car. You just have to plug your phone into the USB. My only complaint is that they didn't make this wireless. A lot of Hondas are starting to move towards that where you can use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto wirelessly. Uh, and I would have liked to see that land in this car, especially at a 30,000 price point. I feel like that belongs in the vehicle. Now, I want to walk you over the center stack and just go over a couple different features that you're seeing here uh, so that you can get an understanding for kind of what kind of spacing you have in here and how these different things work. So, of course, you can see I don't have a classic shifter here. So as I throw to different gears, it's going to, you know, light up an LED to let me know which one I'm in. And then, of course, my parking brake is electronic. So let me throw it in park. If I want to set that, pull up and it lets me know that it's on with the red LED indicator and then press down to turn it off. Now, below that is brake hold. If the car is in drive, I have to be wearing my steer or excuse me, wearing my seatbelt, not my steering wheel. That's a whole different problem. If I'm wearing that, I'm allowed to press brake hold. And then what I can do is I can release my foot uh, from the brake while the car's in drive and it's holding the brake for me. And then when I press the gas, it'll unleash that, allow me to move forward. So this is great for like stop and go traffic if you're in like a fast food line, uh, if you're at the bank. But just remember, you do have to have your seatbelt on. So if you take this feature off, it's going to disengage that feature and throw on the parking brake electronically and then give you an audible alert and something on the screen, such which you can hear yelling at me right now. So cool feature, very, you know, it, 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 it has its own place, uh, but no, that's what it is and how it works. Now over here, there are three different buttons. So let me move this down just a little bit for you here so you can see a little bit better. Uh, you've got an econ button, a sport button, and the EV mode. Now we talked about EV mode earlier. This allows you when you have a built up charge to move into purely electric mode driving. Uh, so great for going like 25 and under, this is for stop and go traffic. Now, let's say I wanna go the opposite. I wanna get the most get up and go out of the car as I can. I probably 
want to switch over to sport mode. When I do, it immediately starts revving at a higher RPM, giving me a little bit more power, get up and go. Uh, but I am going to lose out on the gas mileage. So while I'm getting 51 in the city and 45 on the highway here, or excuse me, 48, I am going to start to lose out on that using the sport mode. Now, the opposite of that would be the econ mode, right? So when I press this, green leaf is going to come on up here in the, uh, the dash, and then it's going to give me a little bit better gas mileage. But in doing so, it's going to affect things like my accelerator, if, if I'm pressing on it, is going to take off and go quite as fast. So it's going to limit that. And then my AC controls up top aren't going to blow quite as hard. Uh, so understand that it is going to limit some systems to help improve gas mileage of the car. So improving gas mileage, reducing, but improving, maybe improving performance. Uh, and then EV mode is a standalone. Hey, I'm really trying to get the most out of the car as far as that hybrid uh, technology, right? So let's talk about the back of camera real quick. All right, guys, so when I throw it in reverse, I just wanna pull the back of your camera and make sure you have a good understanding of this. It has three different views and you have cross traffic monitoring. Now let's talk about the views first. I've got a wide angle view here, just a classic backup camera right here and then one aim straight down. So this is fantastic if I'm backing up to something and I need to be able to see it. So perfect example is as I get back over here, you know, I'm gonna be looking around and go, oh, okay, there's this, this curb deal that I don't necessarily wanna ride over. Let me just back up to it and stop, right? Maybe this is a bush, maybe this is a pole, maybe this is a, a parking structure that you're driving in. It helps out as far as seeing that, right? And these same dotted lines, this is about six inches from your car and about two and a half to three feet. So if you're looking at these, these guidelines, that's gonna let you know exactly how close. So from parallel parking, I want them on the other side of this line up here. Now, cross traffic monitoring, what this is designed for is if I'm backing out of a spot and let's say I'm in between two large SUVs, I can't really see that well, right? I can only see that much. Well, what this does is there's there's a uh, sensors off the back corners of the car to where if a car is coming, it'll give me an auto alert and show arrows on the screen, letting me know which way they're coming from. So I know to hold, there's a car coming from this way or this way until they get past me. And you can turn this on and off as well. So if you prefer not to use that feature, know that you can, just like all the other Honda sensing features, you can turn them on and off. I would highly recommend leaving them on though to help you out. All right guys, so we made it through the entire car and I went over a lot of different comparisons. So in a quick amount of time, I'm gonna revisit all those comparisons so that you can be reminded of them. And then of course, just give you a couple thoughts on this car compared to other vehicles out there on the market. So the first thing I wanna start off is at the very front of the car, let's talk about horsepower. This car gets 151 horsepower coming out of it. So I wanna throw that comparison up on the screen so that you can understand how it stacks up to other cars out there on the market. As I mentioned earlier, the Honda Civic, if you're looking at the two liter engines, let's say you're looking at a base model, you're getting 158 horsepower. If you're looking at that 1.5 liter turbo that you're gonna find at all those models above, uh, maybe you're looking at the higher ends, it's gonna put out approximately 180 horsepower right? So just so you're going to have a strong understanding of, hey, if I'm looking at something very similar to this, that isn't a hybrid, right? Now let's talk about gas mileage inside of the vehicle. So uh, this car gets 51 in the city and I believe 48 on the highway. Uh, now remember that if you drop down to that EX, you're getting 55 in the city and 49 on the highway. So kind of nice to know that not only could I save about four Gs, but I could also get better gas mileage. But I want to compare this to other vehicles and makes out there in the, uh, in the world. So I'm going to throw that up on the screen so you can understand how this car stacks up out there. While you're looking at that, I also remind you the Civic 33 in the city and 42 on the highway. So it's a big jump difference between gas mileage if you're looking at something like the hybrid versus a non-hybrid vehicle, right? So, and, and then if you're looking at like the Accord hybrid, you're looking at roughly 48 in the city and 48 on the highway, right? So a little bit better gas mileage inside of this vehicle, a little bit smaller, a little bit lighter, makes a lot more sense, right? Now, as far as uh, legroom and spacing goes, uh, identical in the Civic and this vehicle. So up front, I've got 42.3 inches of legroom in this vehicle. I'll throw a comparison up to other makes and models out there on the market so you can understand how they stack up. It's really close on this one, uh, you know, so you're not gonna see a lot of fluctuation between vehicles. And then as you jump into the second row, a little bit more fluctuation, I'll throw that comparison up so you can understand how they stack up. This car has 37.4 inches of legroom in that second row. Plenty of space for a six footer to sit behind another six footer uh, and have space and feel comfortable if I wanted to take a long ride. And let's be honest, if you're looking at this car, it's probably because it's gonna be a commuter or because you do make long trips uh, and it just makes more sense to own, right? So just something to be aware of. Now, as you move into the trunk space, this car has 15.1 cubic inches uh, or excuse me, cubic feet of space inside of the vehicle. Honda Civic has 14.8, so a little bit less than that, but I wanna throw something up on the screen so you can see how other makes and models out there in the market compared to this vehicle. So now that you've taken a look at that, we've gone over all the comparisons. I just wanna give you a couple pointers and things that I like and don't like about this car. In the very back, the first thing I don't like is that it doesn't have a spare. I live in Texas, I live in Austin. There's a lot of construction. The city is forever growing with all the people that move here. It makes sense to have something other than fix a flat in the vehicle. So I would love to have a spare. Now you could go to the parts to and buy yourself a donut and the accessories and jacks that you need and probably maybe be able to take out that foam and fit it down in there or just put it in the back of the car. So know that that is an option, but I'd like to see it just live in the car because it belongs in the car and this is 30 grand, right? Now, as you move into the second row, no real complaints there. I think it's a nice, uh, nice materials, nice fit, nice seating. Uh, as you move up to the front, my biggest complaint is typically about Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I hate that it's not wireless. That's kind of a bummer. And the place where the phone fits is a little bit janky in the sense that my phone will fit there, but if I plug it in, ah, it kind of starts 
starts to get a little weird, but that's most cars if we're being honest, right? Uh, outside of that, now, things I would mention, if you're comparing this to the EX, the trim below it, it's about a four grand difference. Uh, and once again, I'm gonna throw that up on the screen so you can understand, hey, if I wanna drop down that EX, save that $4,000, what features am I giving up? So I'm gonna throw that up on the screen. So to go through some of those features, you're giving up the leather interior, you're giving up the moonroof, you're giving up the 10 speaker system with I believe 450 watts. Uh, on the outside of the car, you're gonna be giving up uh, one inch on your wheels. So from a 17 inch wheel to a 16 inch wheel with a little different pattern. And to be honest, I like the pattern on the EX better. Uh, if you wanna see a review on the EX, uh, know that at the end of this, I'll have uh, a place where you can click on it and see the EX review that I've done as well uh, with some comparisons to other vehicles and makes out there in the market. Um, outside of that, I think it's a fantastic car. This one kind of sneaks under the radar for most people. They don't really think about it and they don't know that much about it because chances are they're thinking of that Gen 1 Insight that used to compare with the very first Prius. It was a weird looking hatchback car with covers on the back wheels and wheel, steel wheels with hubcap covers and all kinds of weird stuff that Let's be honest, just wasn't that attractive, but it was very functional and very performance based as far as miles per gallon. So this is a much more stylish, nice looking car with a lot of nice features that you would typically see and you know in a nicer car, but it happens to be a hybrid as well. So for that reason, I would recommend it. I like this car. I like what it's about. I like the sizing, the spacing, the gas mileage. I think it makes sense for a lot of people. I could hand this car down to a young person knowing that they'll have all these additional safety features to protect them. And let's be honest, if this kid's headed off to college, I know that they'll be protected. There's a lot of safety features in the car to make sure that they are driving safely because uh, I want my babies to be safe when they head off, right? And then of course, I want them to save money. They probably don't have much. They're probably working a part-time job, going to school, trying to buy books, beer, and everything else that college involves. Uh, and so saving some MPGs and not having to put a ton of money in that gas tank outside would be a nice thing to offer a college student. So this is a fantastic car to own yourself, to be able to hand down to the next generation uh, and still be able to provide them with a lot of different features that they can enjoy, whether it be audio, whether it be safety uh, or just general driving, right? I want them to be in a safe, reliable vehicle. So for that reason, I highly recommend this car. I think it sneaks under the radar and you should pay attention to it. Other than that, I ask you uh, four favors. One being, I hope that you'll press the like button for me. It makes me happy. I know that I talk too fast and sometimes I spit even on the camera, but press the like button anyway. I'm a human, I appreciate it, I love it, I like it, and I need it. I need that like button pressed. Uh, and of course, it does help out my channel, right? So let's be honest, right? A Little bit of transparency. Secondarily, I hope that you will, uh, of course, comment on the video. Let me know what you think. Did I miss anything? Is there something you wish I would go over? Do you have questions, comments, concerns about your specific vehicle that you're trying to figure out? Let me help you out. Uh, in the bottom in the description, I typically put my phone number uh, so you can feel free to call text or send me a sweet ass gift if you want um, or you can always email me uh, so there are plenty of ways to reach out to me or I have a Facebook page which will be down below too so you can always access uh, me there as well so hopefully you have that ability to do that uh, in one of those manners so like it hope you leave a comment subscribe to the channel uh, and, and let me tell you about other Hondas as they come out and then lastly I'm gonna ask you for a favor share the video you're in a forum you know some guys you know somebody who's shopping for a car share this video with them share it with some others man get it out there in the world I promise you and all the reviewers and all of the world on YouTube, I'm not the worst one. I might be second worst, but I'm doing okay. So share that video if you can. Other than that, like the channel, subscribe, comment, and all of the things. And later, guys!